Hello and welcome back to another part in our series of videos where we are looking at DSM-7 and today it is the turn of Active Insight. It is one of the many applications and services that are going to be included in DSM-7 when it is fully rolled out. The beta has been around now since the 8th of December 2020 and Active Insight is this big um, kind of network hardware-wide overview tool. It allows you to be able to oversee multiple Synology NASes um, across multiple different locations and be able to action and um, he get alerts and notifications on different instances and alerts that you may need to be kept abreast of in that hardware environment. This is very much one for the IT managers out there and although a lot of this information is quite useful as a single NAS user, you're barely going to be scratching the surface of what this app can put out. But a few disclaimers straight off the bat. First and foremost, this application as it stands doesn't seem to support virtual DSM um, and some of those systems where DSM is slightly different such as the NVR platforms, uh, NVR1219, stuff like that. This is very much on um, physical Synology disk station NASes. Also, although this is in beta right now, um, you do have access to the premium features at this time and some features when it is fully released will be on a premium subscription so it's worth bearing that in mind and at the moment i've only got two NASes uh, with dsm7 ready to roll for this device in this series of videos but today i'm going to go through both the physical and the mobile application i'm going to be using an android version of the application now i've set it up already we've got a synology nas here that's got hybrid share running we have got um uh, ssd caching happening there in the background as well so the nas system we are utilizing today is the 1019 plus but we've also got the 20 uh, the 220 plus as well and i am going to use that to kind of trigger some stuff in the background later on uh, for a comparison video with the sm6 6.2 that's why we've got a couple of NASs here and I've created these in our own separate group so when we go to the hosts group we can have a look here at these different NASs and what kind of information we can garner as mentioned there is a mobile application that has a number of the key kind of analytical features all built into it and you can use that tool to access the full dashboard of active insights you can see it is on the Synology server rather than accessing the NAS directly. So to give you a sense of comparison there, if we go to the resource monitor, and at the same time, we go to the overview of this NAS via Active Insight, you're able to see there's a lot more ready information. Yes, you can access CPU, memory, network, and a lot of that information you can go into to find out some more information. You can even switch to historical data if you've enabled those features. But with Active Insight, you get a lot more readily available. You can break it down into storage parameters, break it down into applications and services such as caching, and all of that can be configured across time periods as well. If you have multiple um, applications running there in the background, or you've got different services running, they'll all be featured here. And you can get lots more information about what kind of storage is being utilized, the drives in the RAID, all of this information is readily available via this single portal access point. In fact, earlier on, when we were setting up the NASes, one of the NASes had its PSU accidentally removed. And this is something that is just easily done. And I kept track of this alert from when this happened because I wanted to show that this was recognized. You can mark it as a result. It does give you recommendations on what to do, as well as making sure that if you do set subscription the subscription up and different alerts to happen so if we go to the management of these we can change and create customized alerts based on different instances of things we want to be aware of such as if we go for this one just call it alert one we can go ahead and say that we want to know if and when any one of these instances are triggered so say for example we want to know when the cash right iops are greater greater than or less than a certain number and it persists for a certain period of time we can get the system to alert us as well as recommended solutions that we can apply ourselves so we can let our team know that that needs to be done and we can learn as we go or we can go for some automated ones that are built into the system such as you saw earlier you can even choose which NAS is in the groups that you've created it will apply to and these are very customizable alerts here so if we go for example 
for an alert where we will go down for disconnection. So if we go for a disconnection time and we are going to go for um, a threshold of one hour there. So we'll go ahead there. That's created uh, a disconnection alert there. We can edit it there and make sure this alert is applied to the 220 plus. Click OK. That alert is now available and set up there in the background. And there will be long term information as you can see here with all the things that are happening on those individual systems. Now, for those of you that have used the Synology CMS system in the past, some of these options may be familiar to you. But the Synology CMS system never really had a lot of the analytical advantages that Active Insight is bringing to the table. And again, Active Insight, the clue is in the title. It is this ongoing one portal access point that alerts you on a myriad of different things happening with your Synology in the background. And again, the overview, even the single dashboard, is very, very informative. And the longer you've got these devices running, the more metric data you can go through. You can even compare individual NASs and create alerts when you realize that some NASs are starting to show issues that you want to know about. And you can tailor those alerts so you can get rid of ones that are less applicable. Maybe you don't use LUNs, maybe. You're not reliant on SSD caching, which would be weird in this day and age. All of these are readily available here, and more information can be garnered from them. For example, if we go for this option here, we can find out more information about SSD caching and more to do with latency throughput, IOPS, and more. It's incredibly detailed UI there. And again, you can go into individual NASs if you choose, or you can go ahead and go for that full dashboard that gives you all of that information in the background. Now, at the same time, as mentioned, there is a mobile app in the background. So if we switch to my mobile, we can go to the Active Insight application. You link it to your Synology account, which in turn you have linked to each of those devices with Active Insight. And from here, we have got all of that lovely information. And again, we can go into a lot of analytical data there. Flicking sideways, you can go into weeks, months, years, but it does only go up to one year currently there in the background for all of the data that is maintained on these devices. You can go through those alerts, and as you can see, there is the alert from earlier on, and the recommendations of what it suggests we should do, whether it is to have a UPS or more in the background. And you can flick straight away into other NASs very, very easily there in the background. And there you have it. That is Active Insight. This is very much going to be a tool that I'm going to be keeping an eye on as it develops, largely because I think it brings a lot of those enterprise-grade features. And with Synology moving towards this hybrid storage system with things like Synology Drive and Hybrid Share creating a very fluid multi-platform environment and with C2 going on as well, I think this is going to be a very, very useful tool to those IT managers that manage a large numbers of Synology devices across their business environment. With a customizable alert system there and abilities to create grouping there in the background and all of that included with your own Synology NAS system hardware environment, although some of it, of course, will be premium features. I think this is a very exciting time to get behind Synology there. And DSM-7, even in beta, is leaving me quite impressed. Now, stay tuned for our next video where we are going to be looking at the Synology Photos application. We're going to be looking at the new way that the system is going to be handling photography where it merges the old Synology Moments and Photo Station into a single, single usable application. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Click like if you did and subscribe to learn more. And of course, you can visit the links in the description to learn more about DSM-7 and the rest that's going on with Synology NAS in 2021. I will see you next time.